What are the best science fiction movies from the year 1991 to the year 2001? Let's take a look at these and let me give my opinions about this for fun coming up next. <laughs> So check out my previous best of science fiction videos. The last video ended with 1991, Terminator 2, a massive leap, in my opinion, advanced in computer graphics, and forever after, CGI becomes a key part of cinema for all kinds of movies, but in particular, as you know, fantasy and science fiction. So the span here for this video is between Terminator 2 and September 11th, 2001, when I think culturally, historically, there is a shift in the kinds of stories being told more towards post-apocalyptic fare after the year 2001. So now we have this decade or thereabouts in the 1990s where science fiction movies were, I think, became more paranoid and they became more conspiratorial, sort of a rehash of what was going on in the late 1960s, early 1970s. And you get a lot of Philip K. Dickian movies. In fact, a lot of movies made by and from Philip K. Dick's work. And they tend to feature protagonists who are lost, who are having the wool pull over their eyes, as it were, and they're uncertain about what's going on in the world. They're paranoid, and they come to find out the nasty truths about their reality. You'll see several movies with that theme here in this video. And yet this particular decade, it's actually not well loved by a lot of people, including me. When I looked up what are the best movies, I didn't see a lot that I thought, these are great movies. I see a lot of pretty good movies. But this decade of the 1990s comes right as the internet is coming into mass society. And a lot of these movies don't incorporate those ideas about what the internet is, what it will do to us. As well, it's not really about smartphones and technology we use today. So it feels like an older period. And frankly, the blockbusters are kind of lame or pedestrian or ordinary from this period. Think I don't like Jurassic Park that much, although a lot of you do, which is fine. Independence Day, Men in Black, these things created, you know, franchises or spawned sequels or, you know, movies that are like them. But I just didn't think they're that great. So here's my list of the best 10 movies from 1991 to 2001. Let's see what you think about them. Coming in at number 10, a movie sort of still about today, The False Reality within a true reality sort of, and about reality TV, and now, you know, everything on the internet, it's The Truman Show. Truman Show! Yeah! Good morning! Good morning! Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> what if? No scripts, no cue cards. Morning, Spencer! How's it going? What if you were watched every moment of your life? How many cameras you got there in that town? 5,000. This movie directed by Australian director Peter Weir, starring Jim Carrey, is sort of a metaphor or an allegory of a person trapped in a world he doesn't understand is fake. And so then you got a lot of good material in this movie about reality TV, about being delusional about your own reality, typical themes that come up in this period of time and in a lot of the movies we'll talk about. There's a religious allegory, though I'm not very fond of, which is that Truman, the name of the character True Man, is faced with a director played by Ed Harris called Christoph or of Christ or Christ of. And it seems to be an anti-religious, maybe an anti-Christian allegory. So be aware of that. But some of the other themes going on in this movie are pretty good. So it doesn't may not feel science fiction to you, but it is because it extrapolates from the beginnings of, say, the reality TV era. So for that reason, I think it works in this list. Number nine was remade several years ago as a live action movie. It's actually a Japanese anime. It's Ghost in the Shell. the show brings up all the material that would be popular at this point in fact that comes out of the cyberpunk era developed in the 1980s and particularly by William Gibson and a num number of writers like that and you'll see William Gibson's stamp over all of these movies so you must read Neuromancer then you probably know most of these movies pretty well Ghost in the Shell has some of those ideas but really well done anime I'm not a big anime fan personally but this one is pretty good to me so here it is number eight is a franchise movie 
Why would I put one in here? I think this is the best in the franchise, one of the best for sure. It's Star Trek First Contact. <laughs> We've lost shields. Our weapons are gone. Perhaps today is a good day to die. I think pretty much anybody can enjoy Star Trek First Contact because it's about people, the human race, trying to get off of the Earth and do better and progress, especially after a major world war in the Star Trek lore, versus this collectivist thing that's going to contain the Earth, the Borg, the famous villains from Star Trek, and then Captain Picard and his merry band of heroes from Star Trek, the next generation TV show, have to come along and sort of get us to the progress versus the regress of collectivism. That's a very basic way of seeing this movie, but it's quite well done. It's pretty edgy, somewhat dark, and Star Trek needs that at times. So for that reason, and a bunch of others, this is very well done. I like this movie at number eight. Number seven is the movie about the advances in biological technology, genetics and our understanding of genetics and genetic engineering and what we can do with it, it's Gattaca. How many launches are there in a day? A dozen? Sometimes more. You're the only one who watches every one of them. If you're going to pretend like you don't care, don't look up. I know a lot of people that like Gattaca. I'm okay with it. And I think it's a really good exploration of the ideas within it, which is genetic engineering and selective eugenics and all that. Very complex issue. In fact, I disagree with the movie at times. But I think because it's so thoughtful, I have a friend who's a biology professor. I think he uses it in a biology class. And I think it's worthwhile to pursue this movie, which still talks to us about these issues of genetic modification in humans but also on all creatures in the entire world. Number six is sort of, I think, controversial. I don't think a lot of people watch this. It definitely bombed at the box office. But Steven Soderbergh's remake, in fact, his adaptation of the Stanislaw Lim novel Solaris is really good. Kelvin, is it? Yeah. Kelvin. Sorry about that, Calvin. It's the names, you know, just for some reason. It's, uh, yeah, um, well, uh, you want to come in? I'm fine. This was marketed as a love story. The poster, the movie poster for this movie hinted at a love story. Stanislaw Lim himself hated that idea. I don't think the movie is really about a love story, sort of. But it is about some of the emotional resonances that you see in Solaris. This is a really well done remake of a Tarkovsky classic, the three hour 1970s Soviet or Russian era movie. And Soderbergh pairs it down to an hour and a half with George Clooney starring. I really like this version a lot. I love the novel. It's one of my favorite science fiction novels, period. And I think this is a pretty faithful and thoughtful redoing of the novel just picking up on some of the novel's threads the novel's too complex to film but this one pairs it down really well so take a watch see if you like it number five has always been one of my favorites from one of my favorite directors terry gilliam it's 12 monkeys he's got a history doctor violence antisocial six repeated violations of the permanent emergency code insolence defiance disregard of authority 25 to life. I don't think he's going to hurt us. You aren't going to hurt us, are you, Mr. Cole? No, sir. When 12 Monkeys came out, it thrilled me. The more I've watched in movie history and understood the allusions to Hitchcock, especially Vertigo, which is in the, this very movie, to La Jete by Chris Marker, the original. This is an adaptation of the Chris Marker. It's an expansion of it. 12 Monkeys is really good to me as a movie about time travel, insanity, do people believe you, 
and problems of you know ecology, eco-terrorism, or the threats thereof. I've always enjoyed the aesthetics of this movie. I think Terry Gilliam, this was one of the realizations of his imaginative vision, which is darker and maybe a little bit more cynical. So take a look at this movie. What do you think about it? Definitely people are going to compare it to La Jete, a absolute classic. So it may not hold up in contrast for you to that movie. But on its own, I think this movie is pretty good. Now, in truth, when I look at my 10 movies here, I could actually toss them up and probably put them in any order and be happy with them. I feel that they're, most of them are of the same tier. But the next four, I probably will put above the last six. So this one, one of my favorites, one of the few that... I dare say, I hate to admit this, might make me cry, is The Iron Giant. Now, I read Ted Hughes' The Iron Man, a deeply poetical children's book to my kids. One of my kids, it was sort of the first book he tried to read. <laughs> read the book, it's kind of hard to read. But The Iron Giant is an adaptation of that book, and it's really well done by Brad Bird in a traditional 2D with some, some 3D animation style. Classic 1950s nuclear holocaust movie but with an alien robot who comes down to earth and may help or may hinder humans you know movies like big hero six are inspired by the iron giant and i really appreciate some of its ideas and you know the emotional payoff in this movie so for that reason i'm putting it at number four number three might surprise you and you know you have to be sort of a star trek aficionado maybe you need to know just something about star trek to appreciate this movie but you know what? David Mamet says this is one of the few perfect movies ever made. I don't know if I agree with that, but it's Galaxy Quest. Okay, you gonna move to the right. To the right. Would you sit, sit your ass down? <laughs> sit, move. You want to drive this thing? <laughs> Galaxy Quest is sort of a spoof on Star Trek actors or franchise actors who are so beloved by fans that they hate their own characters, the show that they were on a long time ago. But in the movie, it's a great plot. It's a funny plot. Aliens receive the signals of the old TV show Galaxy Quest and believe that these actors are real, that the scenarios they are in in the TV show are real, and the aliens take them up into space to fight a real space battle. Great cast here. Very funny stuff about people who are a fish out of water story, obviously. This classic, though, I mean, it's rewatchable, and I love funny movies that make me laugh. I can watch them when I'm sick and they cheer me up. So Galaxy Quest is really one of the few on my list that always do well when I watch it. So it's at number three. Number two should inspire you video makers, movie makers, because it was done on a very small budget. I think just $10,000 or $20,000 by now a Hollywood director, well-known, Darren Aronofsky made for his first movie, The Black and White, Noirish, but really paranoid conspiracy movie, Pi. 12.45, restate my assumptions. One, mathematics is the language of nature. Two, everything around us can be represented and understood through numbers. Three, if you graph the numbers of any system, patterns emerge. Therefore, there are patterns everywhere in nature. And Pi is, as I described earlier in the video, one of those movies where is it all in the character's head? Is he making up the conspiracy? Are people pursuing him? And great themes here, Philip K. Dickian themes, paranoid conspiracy theories about governments who are out to get us, giant states, uh, deep state, for example, the CIA, FBI. Those would be themes in 1990s movies, and especially in science fiction. So you get that here with this great movie. <laughs> I really enjoy watching this movie, although it makes me very paranoid. Now, before we get to number one, I'm gonna give some honorable mentions, and I'm gonna admit to you something. You're probably gonna hate me for this. No, don't hate me, but I'm not putting The Matrix on my top 10 list. And you're gonna ask, why, Matthews? Why do you not put The Matrix here? You know, The Matrix has some classic stuff in it, but to me, Despite the red pill, blue pill scene, which is iconic, 
The movie has some faults and some big ones. One of them is that act number three in that movie really doesn't go anywhere. It's just a big shootout or showdown for 20 to 30 minutes with an obvious conclusion. The movie sort of stops pushing its ideas by the end of the second act. And while I love the idea of a simulation, maybe a simulation within a simulation, that was of course done by Fassbender and World on a Wire and a number of, of other sort of sorts of things like that. You know, The Matrix really does copy a lot from William Gibson's Neuromancer. And so, you know, it, it does well with that, but because it, it is sort of derivative and especially because the last act just doesn't go anywhere for me, I can't put it in this top 10 Although certainly it should be mentioned as I'm doing right now. Contact, I wanna love this movie, but it's deeply flawed. You just have to read Stanislaw Lem to see a take it, takedown of Contact. And Carl Sagan's overly optimistic ideas. This movie is the opposite of Paranoid. And so for that reason, you know, it doesn't consider whether aliens are friendly or not in this movie. So it really needs to. It's too hokey for me. So for that reason, I leave it off. Existence by David Cronenberg. I like this movie. It doesn't have enough in it. And it is a ripoff of a Philip K. Dick novel. So I'm not putting it on here. The X-Files, Strange Days, and I've already mentioned Independence Day. These sorts of movies are decent to pretty good. You should pursue them but they're not number one. Number one has long been a favorite of mine, and a number of you are going to complain about this because you may not like the premise, you may not like a bunch of things about this movie, but I've always enjoyed it as a noir space thriller. It's the movie Dark City. So it seems you've discovered your unpleasant nature. How are you? We might ask the same question. Yes. This movie was highly praised by Roger Ebert when it came out. That's the reason why I watched it myself. And I love what it's doing with movie history. It takes the noir, puts it in space. The most unique spaceship, one of the most unique spaceships in movies. It's got this sort of above ground, below ground thing with the paranoid conspiracy theory going on. A character who is an amnesiac wakes up and he doesn't know who he is or what's going on, but he figures it out. This movie has a lot of echoes of the famous Fritz Long movie, Metropolis. It, to me, it's inspiring. I love watching this movie as this character sort of unfolds and undoes the conspiracy. The, the, thing, the bad things are being done to the humans in this. I really enjoy that. And I love the shot making. In fact, you should watch this movie whether you love it or hate it because I think it may still have the record for the most cuts in a movie or the quickest cuts. I think it's like two seconds per shot in this movie. Really choppy, fragmented, but it goes along with the themes. So I'm inspired by the movie. The performances here, Rufus Sewell, Jennifer Connelly, William Hurt. It's number one. I could put it at number 10, as I said on this list, but to me, when I want to turn to these 1990s movies and one particular science fiction movie, I think I'm going to turn to this one first. Now, what do you think of my list? What do you have to say about it? I know there's some controversy here, but I'm trying to give you ideas about what you might watch, what you might have missed from this particular period of time. And I think this period, the 1990s, where the internet is just under development, the Soviet Union has just collapsed, we're out of the Cold War, and we're not yet into this period of you know, terrorism after 9-11 and smartphones and the internet taking over our lives. I think this period will be seen as an aberration and I think we'll find some movies, hidden gems of interest to us eventually. So it's worth mining all the science fiction movies from this time. Let us know what your list is. What is your top 10? I'd love to know from this period, 91 to 2001. Thanks and have a great day and please subscribe to this channel.